Hello and welcome to 3D modeling video number 61 and the ninth video on normal mapping. So the topic of this video is floating geometry, how and why you should use it. So first of all, you should determine whether you actually need to use it. If you're making a high quality model for a cutscene, uh, a CG animated movie, then that's out of the question because you actually need all the details to be modeled in. So you need all the nuts and bolts to actually be visible there. However, if you're simply creating high polygon geometry to bake into a normal map, a low polygon model, for use in a game resolution mesh for a video game, then you will need to go ahead and give, give yourself the option of using floating geometry. It can really speed up your workflow. So what is floating geometry? Well, floating geometry is geometry that instead of being built into the mesh, like actually connecting the edges, it just floats on top. So if I clone this, and use the Claver Tech tool. I can create this one right here, and then I can, for example, uh, let me go ahead and reset the X form, and then I can apply some quick symmetry here. And here is an example of floating geometry. As you can see, it floats above the geometry. It does not actually connect with it doesn't connect with the edges. So you can tell that the the high point, the good part about this is that you don't actually need to model, take the, a lot of time to model anything in, connect the edges, weld the vertices, you can just have it float and you can have detail on there in seconds. And I'm just going to go ahead and you know add some more details, uh, some bolts right here. Let's go ahead and use this one. Let's go ahead and scale it down. So this is what I mean. This is just a, a small c portion of my library of doodads and shapes or and things I can quickly add to the model. So I can add uh, a nut here. Let me go ahead and scale it down some more. And this is just, you know, random detail I'm, adi I'm adding. And let's go ahead and symmetrify. So, floating geometry really comes in handy. Actually, I, I need to move it up a little bit. It's It should not be down there. Okay. So, floating geometry, if you have a very complicated mesh, it can be a real pain to edit all this detail in. Like, actually, I would be attached. So, you can just use floating geometry and render it to a normal map. So, that's one example. I'm going to go ahead and render this to a normal map later. And I'll show you another technique of how we can get a paneling effect so this is an example of uh, a more complex mesh and it can be a real pain editing all the panels in here. I mean right now it's relatively easy because we have to, it's just a simple sphere object and has good topology by default but let's say I wanted to go ahead and add some paneling in here. I'm going to go ahead and... Okay first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and select some geometry and I'm going to make sure I have and I'll go ahead and I'll go and detach it, detach as clone. Now I'll go ahead and use the push modifier to push it out. So now it's been pushed out. Now I'm going to go ahead and create some quick paneling and I'll do that by selecting these two edges, ring, and I think I will ring these edges as well. That will create this kind of effect. And then I can select this. Now first I'll go I'll go and delete this other side. Now I'll go ahead and select this. Symmetrify on the Y axis. I'll go ahead and ring two loops through here. I'll go ahead and bevel this inside and let's go ahead and test out how it will look when smooth okay so here's a simple paneling effect and if you look at it from a centered angle it actually looks like it's actually modeled in there but it's not it's just floating geometry all right so I'm going to go ahead and take some time to bake it in, 
bake it into this. Let's say this is the, this is the uh, the low polygon mesh, and I'm going to go ahead and bake this floating geometry in there, and I'll see you once I finish. All right, and here I am back with the baking. So one thing you want to do is to decrease any aliasing effects that happen. You actually don't want it to be blank. So if if you want to bake in some panels to this object, you don't want it to be just the panels. What I also did was I cloned this object and I applied a push modifier and then turbo smooth with zero iterations and of course two iterations when it's rendering, which will happen also when you're baking it. So the the rendering iterations are not just talking about the actual rendering here. It's also talking about um when you're baking it, that also counts as rendering. So basically, you don't want it to be just blank, otherwise you will get this effect. So, if I just go ahead and make it blank, I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete this, add a new one. Okay. So if you just, um, I'm going to also go ahead and remove this one. So right now, the only object that's being baked is this one right is this one right here. So if I go ahead and start the baking process, what you'll happen what you'll see happening is you'll get a bunch of red because there's nothing there to uh to bake into the mesh and also your normal map, which is not this right here, this is just a simple uh, uh, show of what's happening here. Your actual normal map will have a lot of aliasing, a lot of jagged edges here. So you, ne you never want it to be simply blank. You, al you always want some object to be here. So that's why I just created this sphere here and I just pushed it out a little bit so it's a little bit further out. And without that sphere what you get is some jagged edges. In fact, let me go ahead and give you a demonstration of what that looks like. Okay, so here's a demonstration of why you should never bake with just one object, or basically you have a lot of empty area. So basically, the rendering, the baking process is that 3ds Max shoots a bunch of rays towards the object, and whatever it catches becomes a normal map. So if you only have this, this is the uh, what's being baked into with the projection modifier and this panel type object is being baked into it. However, in this case, the only thing that's being baked into it is this panel type object, this this one right here. It's just called bake. And the result is this object right here, this this normal map. And you can see it's really ugly here around the edges. There's really terrible jag jag um jagged effects. It just looks pretty bad. However, so what you do is you just simply clone this. You go ahead and delete the projection modifier. You apply the push modifier, push value 1, and then of course turbo smooth. So now you add this second sphere to the bake list. So right here you go under bake, pick, and you pick your second sphere. And this way you're baking two things into the object. This high polygon sphere and this uh, panel object as well. And if you do that, you get this bake. And as you can see, there's no terrible jagged edges around the corner, the edges. And you can see clearly that this is a gives, you a, gives us a superior result. So that's the basics. And here you can see that we've got a nice panel type effect and we've kept the original geometry un un untouched. We've just got this object right here and this is what it looks like when it's been turbo smooth and it just bakes nicely into the object. And you also want to give you don't want it to be just this. right you might think that this is all you need just to have this kind of indentation but it actually also helps to have a, a smooth edges a smooth effect if you have some geometry around like this so that really helps with getting a nice effect and then you get this really nice looking normal map this is 1024 by 1024 and this way if you have a really complex object you don't actually have to take the time to model everything in. You can just have it float there on the surface. 
So that's it for this example. I'll go ahead and delete these. Let's check this out as well. I'm going to go ahead and bake this and I'll come back to you with the results. Okay, so I've gone ahead and added one more detail. So here is on the bottom we have the, the, the basic plane that I'm using that with the projection modifier. Then on top I have this one which is just some quick extrusion details. And then I have this detail and this detail. So I have four objects here in total. So first of all, if you when in your projection modifier, you make sure that all your objects you want to bake into are selected, which means that this one, this one, and this one. Second of all, you want to go into the cage sub-object mode, and you want to make sure the cage covers all your high polygon geometry. And if it's sometimes easier to go into a side view, and basically if I click on reset, this is what it is at the beginning. I'll just c press uh, Control A to select everything, and then I'll simply move the cage above all the high polygon geometry. And basically, once you finish that and bake it all in, of course, Turbo Smooth to zero, render iterations too. Here is the nice result you will get. And as you can see, you can't really tell that this is floating here. It looks just like it's being. Uh, it's uh, in a real indentation. Whereas here, the high polygon meshes are just simply floating above the geometry. So, and it looks pretty nice. This is a 512 by 512 map. So, this gives you a look at how you can very quickly add lots of detail, nice looking detail to your geometry just by having it float up there. So, take the time to gather a nice library of different shapes that you can quickly just throw in there, have them float above the geometry, and then just bake it all in there. And you'll have tons of nice looking detail in your normal maps, in your game resolution meshes, without having to spend a lot of time modeling everything in and making sure everything connects. However, this technique only really works when you're creating a, uh, a game resolution mesh and not when you're making like a high, high polygon model for a movie, or a cutscene, a cinematic, a commercial. In that case, you actually want to model the detail in. And you can use the, the Claver Tech tool, like I showed you in a previous video, to do that. And once you model it in, you can use this object in different ways. And then you can clone it and so you can basically create lots of cool detail just from a single plane so that is how you can use floating geometry thank you for watching and take care